Hello everyone, I'm Rohit, a technical product specialist at Dynatrace, and today we'll look at the user behavior section of the application monitoring side of Dynatrace. We will cover behavior analytics, bounce rate and conversion goals, look at session segmentation and replay, and analyze detected usability issues within the application that commonly reflect user frustration. The user behavior analytics section displays key performance metrics covering user behavior. This includes the top bounces, the top entry and the exit actions, the top pages, and much more. Each of this metric is clickable and we can derive more context into each of these. The top user style, for example, compares new users with the returning users for the application. Any one of this can be used to set as a filter to focus on that one particular group. The top user type section helps check which user type generates the most traffic. This can be real users, robots such as Googlebot, or even synthetics. In this particular example, we don't have synthetics accessing the application within the particular time frame. But if you see at this graph, we do have synthetic as well. The geolocation breakdown helps with analyzing regional user differences across various available metrics. These metrics include active sessions, active users, bounce rate, actions per session, session duration. Based on the metric, we can drill down into a region and focus on specific regions as well. Along with a world view map, you also do get a tabular column with the geolocation and the metric. The sessions infographic shows the total number of sessions over the selected time frame and the number of user actions per session. On performing further drill downs, the active sessions can be viewed. This shows when the most sessions occur, when users are using the application, how the user engagement is, how much time the users are spending per session, and the number of user actions per session. The three intervals with the highest number of active sessions as well as the three intervals with the highest number of session starts can also be observed under peak activity interval. The entry action tile helps analyze the entry action duration. Entry action often are the application landing pages, which make it important to understand and watch the load and XHR actions to understand the aptX ratings of these entry actions. Bounce rate is basically the percentage of user sessions that have only one user action. The bounce rate analysis helps check whether long lasting entry actions have an impact on the bounce rate. This is basically to check if an entry action is too long, which could lead users to exit the application. Also, the impact of JavaScript errors can be analyzed. Exit actions help analyze the exit action duration this is important to understand as it helps identify whether users leave the application because of performance related issues or not. This is why understanding the action duration of the last page load or XHR action is important. Like entry actions, you can also check the aptX rating to understand if a bad experience has led users to quit. Other actions cover all actions that aren't categorized as the entry or exit actions and help provide insights into the duration of all such actions alongside their aptX score. The overall conversion tile shows the overall rate of success of the application measured against configured conversion goals. By clicking on edit, we enter the application settings, where we can configure behavior relevant settings or set cost and traffic control to determine or define what percentage of user sessions to capture and analyze. This is something you can do for session replay as well, only in the case of web application. In this particular case, we have cost and traffic control set at 100% for real user monitoring and for session replay when enabled. What this effectively says is if an application generates 100 user sessions, all of those user sessions will be captured and analyzed, and all of those user sessions will have session replay enabled on them. 
if these values are changed slightly, for example, say 50% each, then of the 100 sessions that the application generates, 50 of those averaged over time will be captured and analyzed. And a further 50% of those, which is 25 sessions, will have session replay enabled on them. So if you have 100 sessions that the application generates over time, 25 of those will have session replay enabled if the values are 50% each. Data privacy settings, such as masking personal data, user actions, IP address masking, user tracking, etc., can be configured at an application level itself. The user tracking where we can use persistent cookies is something which helps determine or differentiate between new users and returning users, and therefore helps enable or helps define in effective caching strategies, as more the number of returning users, the better is the caching strategy. The IP masking helps define settings where you can mask end user IP addresses and GPS locations, where you can mask either all IP addresses or just public IP addresses. The session replay comes in with the opt-in mode where end users can choose to be a part of it, and also content masking preferences where you define rules to define to check how sessions can have masking applied to them during capture or during playback as well. Rage events are detected in Dynatrace as a rage click or a rage tap. Dynatrace detects this as repeated clicks on a page or UI controls in frustration when the application doesn't respond quickly. Three or more rapid clicks or taps within the same area is defined as a rage event. Rage events commonly are a reflection of slow load times or failed resources. Detected rage events affect the user experience score. And when required, you can choose to exclude these from score calculation. Conversion goals are a way of measuring how well your application fulfills the company's business objectives. You can then compare the conversion rates of various user actions against each of the conversion goals. You can compare the conversion rate of various user actions based on the type of the goal. This could be the destination, user action, and what type of user action does this rule apply to? It could be the session duration. So for example, for you to check what percentage of user sessions are for application or for users who are accessing the application for greater than, for example, say five minutes or 10 minutes, the number of user actions, for example, and so on. Going back to the application, if you were to click on short top findings, it would open up the hyperlyzer. The hyperlyzer enables you to analyze multiple dimensions of the usage of your application. You can see where the users are located, what browser version they are using, their operating system, and the number of user actions that the application has received. Each of these are categorized based on the fastest three entries and compared against the slowest three entries. Similarly, for mobile applications as well, the user experience metrics provide a quick overview of the number of users who are actively using the application during the selected time frame. This style shows the number of users, the overall aptX rating, and the user action rate. The aptX rating chart shows the application's average aptX rating trends, and Dynatrace calculates aptX ratings to provide you with a single metric that tells you about the performance of your application and the errors that impact user experience. AptX is calculated for each discrete user action and the application overall. AptX ratings can be used as a benchmark by, for comparing two applications over time. And these generally vary from zero to one, with a value of anything less than 0.5 being considered as unacceptable, a value between 0.5 and 0.7 being considered as poor, 0.7 to 0.85 being considered as fair, 
Anything between 0.85 and 0.94 being considered as good and anything above 0.94 up until 1 being considered as excellent. The user action and users chart compares the number of user actions to active users. The new users chart shows how many users launched your application for the first time during the selected time frame. This metric only counts the first session following the launch of your instrumented application. It is tied to specific devices, so users are counted multiple times if they install the application on multiple devices. The app version distribution chart conveys the rate of version adoption by comparing the number of application sessions that generate or originate from various application versions. This chart is particularly interesting following the release of new application versions as it enables you to track the adoption of latest versions. Similarly, the crashes and errors help you to categorize the total number of crashes by the version, the total number of reported errors by the version, the data privacy tile helps with data collection level, crash reporting and session replay, the web requests show, the web requests generated for this application, the called services show the number of called services and the called services that the application calls. This is much the same way even custom applications are structured. Custom applications relate to all digital touch points in your environment, from rich traditional client applications to smart IoT applications or even Alexa skills. These applications are supported through the Dynatrace OpenKit. And if you see, the metrics more or less remain the same. In case of mobile applications as well, you can define cost and traffic control for the number of user sessions that are captured and analyzed. But session replay in terms of mobile applications is different from web applications, as in web applications where you can define the percentage of user sessions that have session replay enabled. In mobile applications, you have session replay that is available or enabled only on crashes. If you observe, the user behavior screen, it is very much centered around user sessions. And you can also see an analyze user sessions option. But let's first understand why user session analysis is important. User behavior analyzes individual user sessions and derives metrics regarding the same. While this is useful in some situations, it doesn't quite paint a complete picture. Application users do have a tendency to behave in some unexpected ways, perform different tasks with different goals in mind, reside in various geographical areas, use multiple devices, browsers, or even operating systems. This could throw some metrics off, which could result in an incorrect interpretation of user behavior. This is why Dynatrace supports session segmentation. A user session, also called a visit, journey, or a click path, is an interaction between an individual user's device and your application. Basically, it's a sequence of user actions performed by the same user in your application during a limited period of time. Each of these user sessions contains at least one user action. How the user sessions are captured depends, of course, on the application's cost and traffic controls, which we've seen. Dynatrace user session analysis helps in filtering the captured sessions by individual characteristics. This could be the application type, the OS, the browser type, location, user tag, so on and so forth. It helps in performing meaningful drill downs into aggregate results to discover insights into performance problems experienced by a so small subset of users based on particular filter attributes. In Dynatrace, there are two ways to identify a user, through a device identifier or through a user tag. Individual users can be tagged using user tags and sessions pertaining to this particular user can be retrieved. This helps drill down into individual user sessions of particular users and if a problem was observed 
within a particular time frame, then that session can be evaluated and all user actions from that session can be obtained. The persistent cookie that I spoke about contains a unique identifier, which is also marked as the internal user ID in the Dynatrace web UI. Cookies help enable Dynatrace to assign even anonymous sessions to known users. As long as a user has logged in to your application at least once, you can search for and identify that user even when the user accesses the applications in anonymous, unauthenticated sessions. This is particularly useful for analyzing periods of time when the user might not be able to log into your application because of issues with your authentication service. If you see here, we have the user tag Heiner Hastings and we have the internal user ID, which also refers to Heiner Hastings. But if you are filtering by the internal user ID, you can see that there are several anonymous sessions which are tagged with this particular user. The session details contain important device related information such as the device resolution, manufacturer, operating system, geolocation, and IP address. Errors that occur in the application can also be seen by filtering by the error type. The request error, reported error, custom error, JavaScript error, and so on. We also have something called as extended users. The concept of extended users covers use cases where multiple users or tags share one device. Dynatrace creates segments of the cluster when the same user tags or device identifiers meet in different combinations. When a user session ends in a crash, you can leverage session analysis to view the complete sequence of user actions that preceded the crash. This is especially true again for mobile applications. For technical and security reasons, you cannot analyze a single user session across different domains. Suppose your user visits two completely different domains during a single session. How would Dynatrace capture this, given that both domains are instrumented with Dynatrace? You would actually see two separate user sessions. The first one starts with the page load of the first web of the web page of the first domain and ends when the user clicks a link that leads them to the web page of a different domain. The second session starts when the first page load of the second domain and ends when the criteria for ending the user session is met. This happens for the following reasons. The technical reason being that cookies cannot be shared across domains except for subdomains. The technical reason being that it's a feature of browsers and a limitation that all vendors share. If you scroll down here, you see a timeline and session replay. Session replay captures all user interactions within your application and replays them in a movie-like anonymized video-like recording of user interaction with your website or mobile application, each click or tap recorded. You can watch the mouse movement to identify what they are trying to do, where they're having trouble and what's frustrating them. Session replay for web application reviews the content and structure of monitored web pages. It then applies a masking algorithm to anonymize the content by replacing it with asterisks. And by default, the session replay masks, masking algorithm masks all content, user input, text, attribute values with asterisks, and all images being replaced with placeholder images. It's important to note that session replay of a web application does not record a video of the end user screen. It captures the HTML code changes for your application. And similarly, in the case of native mobile application as well, it basically just visually recreates the last user action before a crash and does not capture a video of your end user screen. There are certain limitations in terms of the OSs and, that are supported and the libraries that are supported in terms of native mobile applications and what kind of events can be captured. These limitations are well documented and I would strongly encourage you to go through our documentation for information about this. By analyzing specific actions as well as the site's responses, 
you will be able to fix bugs and make improvements that increase overall user satisfaction. Session Replay is a powerful tool that can help modernize your digital experience monitoring strategy. The ability to play back recorded user sessions and with or without playback masking settings is permissions control. Session Replay helps identify errors that should be fixed immediately and other problems such as malformed pages and infinite spinners and so on. You can use Session Replay to identify and analyze areas of struggle in your application to improve the overall usability. Session Replay helps in detecting errors, understanding the exact user action that led to the error, the severity of the problem and its effect on user experience. You can observe the customer impact by replaying and viewing a session as we just saw when the problem isn't obvious. Because Session Replay provides the best way to demonstrate what the user actually did, it provides the means to resolve customer complaints. And you can use Session Replay to detect and analyze issues such as the user experience not being intuitive enough, the process flow being way too complicated, which prompts users to leave the application midway, the application just being slow and the user repeatedly having to click or tap to move to the next page or jump to the next screen. The application not working is expected across all browsers or devices. And the application prompting the user to change orientation of the devices, for example, in a way that the user doesn't quite understand. So to refresh what we've looked at, we've looked at the user behavior analytics, the usability analytics settings, conversion goals, the hyperlyzer, the user analytics metrics, session segmentation, and the session replay. I hope you find this video informative. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. And, for, and in case you have any other doubts, please refer to our documentation. Thank you.